Argima metriae, the giant comet moth, a female. I've shown them many times before if you follow my YouTube channel. And they're actually one of the more common species in captivity because there is a breeding program for these in Madagascar. Well, I'm calling it a breeding program. But actually, people just collect their cocoons from the wild, even though people claim they're bred in captivity for butterfly farms and hobbyists like me. I don't believe it. I know personally that they are collected from the wild. Either way, it's a beautiful moth and it's one for the more experienced um, moth breeder, because it's not one of the easiest. I think rearing the eggs to uh, adults it can be challenging, but if you know the correct uh, plants, uh, it can be easy. One of the host plants uh, of this species you should use if you, if you live in Europe or North America is um, uh, liquid amber, which is amber tree. And they do quite well on it, they have a nice appetite for that plant. Another one is, uh, I don't know the English name, but it is Cotinus cochrigia, and in Dutch we call it pruikenboom. It's, uh, I think they call it smoke tree or smoke bush, Cotinus cochrigia, and the larvae like it as well. Now, one other alternative in captivity that people use is eucalyptus, eucalyptus gunai, but that's not a good idea. Larvae reared on eucalyptus often die in the final instar, and they are said to produce smaller adults as well, because they don't like eucalyptus that much. They only accept it uh, as an alternative if nothing else is available. So yeah. And pairing them can be difficult as well, because when stressed females will lay all their eggs and refuse to pair. They don't like being handled, they don't like being stressed. If you want to pair these, you should leave them alone. And actually you have to pair them by hand probably. And by doing this will require to uh, leave the female undisturbed, so don't handle her. And just leave her on her cocoon or a place where she can rest. And then carefully introduce the male and wrap them together. Uh, the males, uh, they can handle being uh, handled. Handle being handled, no that's a funny one. They can handle it more and it doesn't disturb them that much. But yeah, hand pairing them can still be difficult because they're very fussy and, you know, they, they just have to be in the mood. Many times they'll refuse to pair and you'll be bothering with it with no results, with no good result at all. I'll be trying to breed them this year. I've always wanted to film the fully grown larvae because the larvae, they become actually g massive, gigantic larvae really XXL sized caterpillars but I've never uh, made a video of a fully grown larva yet so I hope mine will breed so I can rear them on amber tree or smoke bush oh yeah one other plant they really like is uh, Peruvian pepper tree Schinus molle they have a very large success rate on Schinus molle so remember that if you want to rear this species Remember these three plants, liquid amber, cotinus and schinus molle. And the, try and don't try to use eucalyptus because many die on eucalyptus. Some will make it, so it's possible with, with a very low success rate. You'll need a lot of luck as well. It's a very nice fluffy moth, very plushy. Females, they alone lay many eggs because the eggs are very large of this species. They're like um, peas, actually, yeah, the size of peas. So because they are that big, not many of them fit inside the female, even though it's a very big insect. And when disturbed, she'll drop all her eggs. I don't. She's not laying yet, but if we if we ha keep handling there, some at some point she will uh, start laying them, out of fear. And getting a natural pairing is also difficult because they need a lot of space and they need darkness and actually they pre they seem to prefer cool temperatures over hot temperatures because i know one person in the netherlands 
who pairs them in his basement, which is the coldest part of the house. So that's something to think about, even this, despite Madagascar being very hot and very warm. Um, they seem to pair in his basement with success. While the basement is actually uh, colder than the rest of his house. So yeah, I don't know, it could be the conditions there. They also need to disperse their pheromones and they need a little bit of ventilation as well, of course. So, that's just the basics of them. <coughs> Thanks for watching, it's another beautiful moth. I hope you keep watching my YouTube channel because I'm trying my best this year for you to bring a very uh, unique and rare species and film them on YouTube. This one isn't very rare, but it's still very unique and large. And that's well, endemic to Madagascar only. So thanks for watching.